This morning I was watching some YouTube videos, as I do in the mornings, and I came across, I think it's like IBM, IB Investigations, where she was reviewing a case where a girl had gone, um, had uh, unalived, died, uh, yes. and she was going through therapy. She was going through therapy called Aura, with an A. And it was like virtual reality therapy for rehab, for drug abusers. And it puts you in virtual reality and it puts you into, submerges you into basically a life of triggers. So this young lady was an addict. She lived on Skid Row. And so she is literally like physically, physically in a rehab center but she is in this virtual reality of Skid Row. And I have a question. <laughs> like, what is the point of this? I feel like it is the worst way to have any kind of therapy. I don't believe that this would help at all. Okay, I think it's our second step, but it's to stay away from people, places, and playgrounds because they trigger you. So basically, like you learn in rehab, in the 10 step program, not to go anywhere where you may start triggering or feeling like that nostalgia feeling, but for drugs or um, that lifestyle, because basically it's like, we will always romanticize over our drug addiction when we have the opportunity. What is romanticize? Basically, you look at all the beautiful aspects of it. You make believe in your head that everything was wonderful, when in reality, it is not. I mean, it really was not wonderful. Like, you are here, you are in rehab, you've lost everything, I, I lost everything. Um, I was in rehab, I was praying to God that if he got me through this part of my life that I would, I would be forever in his mercy. Like just one more day, please God, like I really learned of a relationship with God when I was in rehab because you really feel like all alone and the only person you have in this world is God and yourself or your higher power. and. The last thing that you want to do is even talk about, they call it like, you're not even supposed to talk about war stories. That They have it, it says war stories. You can get kicked out of rehab for talking about war stories, which is, what are war stories? Oh, I went out the other night, I got effed up, and well, yeah, me and my buddies always did this, or this is how we got drugs, this is what we did. Oh, we would get so messed, anything. You're not even supposed to talk about it. If you talk about it, you could also get, you get kicked out because it's just could trigger people. And here I see that like Dr. Phil and this other lady, I, I can't remember her name, but they have a virtual reality program that is like the number one aspect of their rehabilitation program for addicts. So, Okay, how in the hell is that supposed to help anybody? It doesn't. Listen, if I watch a movie where people are doing like blow or coke or whatever, like I've, I, I'm like, damn, I usually have to change it because like I will start missing it and I haven't done that in like eight, ten years. It's been a while. You know, when I watch some of the movies about um, taking, I can't remember the names of the movies right now, but there's so many out there about taking a pill and like being able to be Superman, basically, like getting all this work done, being focused, being energized. There's a few of them out there. I, again, start feeling like, damn, I wish I could take Adderall again. So literally, I have got to keep my physical self away from People, places, playgrounds, anything that has to do with my past life. My past life as in the, the life I lived, which was all about drugs. Even so much to the fact that they say, 
start taking a different route home from work because you can like start driving and driving home from work and you know before you know it you're like at the bar you used to go to every night after work because you're subconsciously just kind of bring yourself there so go a different route start taking a different route one of the hardest aspects of quitting drugs and alcohol and being in a life of sobriety is that you really need to like change all your friends because the ones that don't want to get sober will could and most likely will help you relapse because they are your friends and people and places and come on why can't you just come hang out da, 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 da. now i understand a little bit not much of this um mentality that like you are in a safe place so let's look at all these images of your triggers so you can what talk about them how you can like get over them the only way you can get over these things is by not being involved in them this is a physical addiction so how do you get rid of physical addictions you take the physical aspect away i mean i'm not sure if it would work for post um ptsd because i don't have ptsd and i think they were saying that they they could use this for like war scenarios I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not going to pretend that I know if that would work or not, but I do know for a fact that I, I strongly disagree with this way of getting sober with this practice or new therapy, submerging yourself into a virtual reality of drugging and the environment that you work so hard to get out of. I, please, somebody, tell me, what is the point of this? Do you have a way of explaining it to me that makes it make it make sense to me? Because it just doesn't make any sense. So I wanted to come on here real fast and 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 tell y'all my my personal opinion is that this won't work. That's my personal opinion. I'm not a doctor though. I'm not doctor. I'm not Dr. Phil. I'm not all these people that have all these like, you know, education certificates or whatever they have. But I lived the life, you know, I went to the school of, of hard knocks. I lived this life and I continue to live it. And I have been sober for eight years. And you know what? I don't want anything to do with any virtual reality of where I used to be. I was crazy. I was insane. I it took me a while to even look back at that girl. I, I that person I was when I was, you know, completely addicted to Adderall and all the other drugs that I was doing at that time to uh, whatever, whether it was you know drinking or the benzos or whatever. Um, I don't ever want to go back to that life, and especially especially like the first couple of years, like. It was hard for me, if you go back to my videos, if you go back for my first video when I explained to you guys some of the feelings you'll get um, when you quit Adderall, I was like shaking. It was so hard for me to revisit it. I had to step away from my that life in order to start a new life. So anyways, I hope that this video somehow makes sense to y'all because I, I'm Right, excuse my appearance, but I'm literally like just doing some yoga and stretching and all that. And I watched some YouTube videos and I was watching this and I can leave a link to it underneath here. What this lady has done. She's amazing. The one who does like these investigations on these people that like literally use drug addicts as like guinea pigs. And it's really disgusting. It's pretty gross, but we definitely are like... A group of people that when we're in it in the mix of addiction we can be taken advantage of and so I feel as if this is what they're doing to see if this approach will work it's kind of like a, a case study without getting paid so anyways my name is Lauren once again this is all for educational purposes only and if you would Guys, hit that subscribe button because it really makes me feel like, oh my God, they're watching. Anyway, thanks so much. Bye-bye.